Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. And we are back with the urban healer herself, Miss Tamea Urban, who is worldwide, although she's based out of Canada. She is a Reiki master. She is a teacher. She is a registered nurse, great friend and healer. And she's here to help us heal. And we want to welcome her back to the show today. How are you? I'm amazing. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Thank you. You look so cute today. I love the black and the headband look. Very cute. Uh, it's because I went to the gym and didn't want to wash my hair. <laughs> good, good, good. <laughs> There you go. Well, welcome. And thank you for being here. Would you mind introducing a little bit uh, about yourself to our new listeners? Absolutely. So my name is Tamara Urban, the Urban Healer. I am in Toronto, Canada, but my business is fully virtual. So it doesn't matter where you're coming from. You can absolutely access my services. I've been a nurse for nine years and I slowly transitioned into more holistic healing modalities. So I'm a Reiki master. I guide meditations, um, clinical hypnotherapist. I do um, a few other things things, you know, I want to do all the different things. I feel like healing is never just physical. It's never just emotional. It's never just energetic. You really have to look at absolutely everything. Otherwise you're not fully healing like head to toe. And otherwise you're just going to be repeating the same pattern. So when you truly heal down to the root of it and you acknowledge all aspects, Mm. your inner world and outer world, that's when you actually see your results. Beautiful. And I know every week we speak, we have a great new topic. And today I believe it's about uh, forgiveness, right? Holidays yes. are here, season's upon us. There's going to be a lot of good, a lot of bad, a lot of depressing, a lot of happy, a lot of, uh, and sometimes it's time to just let things go. So would you mind, you know, giving us a little overview of what we're going to talk about today? Absolutely. So the reason I chose this is like you said, the holiday season is super triggering for most people, whether you love the holidays or you don't. And we're also coming to the end of the year. So it's a beautiful time for us to reflect of like, what are you ready to release? What are you ready to let go of? Who are you ready to like truly forgive and move forward with more ease and more space? Because when we don't forgive, you just like hold on to that energy. And I think that we don't like to dive into this because sometimes doing deep forgiveness work is triggering and people are like, no, I'd rather just have a glass of wine. Thank you. And pretend it didn't happen. Hmm. Got it. Your body does remember. So even if you're trying to ignore it, it's still happening. So first things first, what is the act of forgiveness? So it's the change of mental state where a person decides to let go of anger towards somebody else, knowing that something unfair was done in the past, but choosing to move forward. And it's, Mm -hmm. it's the whole idea of like actually having the awareness that, you know, something unjust happened and that was not okay. But then also knowing that you're just like, you know what, it is what it is. What's done is done. I'm going to let go of that blame. I'm going to let go of that anger. I'm going to move forward. And actually, while I was doing a little bit of research on this, I found this beautiful quote by Oprah and she's like, forgiveness is giving up the hope that the past could be any different, which is so true. And I mean, really like regardless what has happened to you in the past, it's done. And for you to choose to relive it and rethink it and hold on to that anger, you're choosing to relive it over and over and over again, rather than moving forward. And by no means am I ever saying like, pretend it didn't happen or whatever did happen to you doesn't matter because it does. Mm -hmm. But then if you hold on to it, your body is holding on to it. And like we've talked multiple times in our previous um, interviews, when you're having a thought process or a visualization, your body has no idea whether it's real or if it's like, you're just thinking about it. Mm -hmm. So for you to rethink of an event, your body actually goes through the motions, reliving that over and over and over again. And of course that has a long-term um, effects and like you notice them right away. So forgiveness, let's try doing that instead. All right. Good idea. He got me thinking about some people that I should forgive and, um, (laughs) why is it so important? I mean, to let go, to make ourselves feel better, right? What other, you know, things are going to help us if we learn to forgive. So regardless whether you believe in energy medicine or not, but you're holding on to that event energetically. And it's like, I know we've, we've all heard this quote of some sorts, but it's like when you're holding on to anger towards someone and you're just like, kind of like internally glaring at them, Mm -hmm. they have no idea they're living their life. Who are you hurting? You, you're the one who's experiencing that anger, not them. So it really like 
you're, you're choosing to be uncomfortable and they're just doing whatever they're doing. They might not even know that they wronged you if you didn't actually say something and brought it to their attention. So that energy of like anger and resentment, of course, is going to be linked to ruminating thoughts. So you're living in the past over and over, over again. And if you're thinking of things that have already uh, like gone by, you're not here and life is here. <laughs> this is what is real right now. What's gone is gone. So you're really just wasting time and energy on something that won't really help you in the future. And then it's like, you're also, you might move forward into the future in a different way. So let's say you've had your heart broken and someone really hurt you, but then you're like, I hate you. And I'm so angry at you. And then I'm not going to date again. Who who's losing here? (laughs) You, you know? And then it's like, you could meet an amazing person if you allowed yourself to forgive that person, created that emotional energetic space in your body for you to then meet someone new rather than being fixated on that baggage. And again, we meet crappy people who do crappy things and it's not okay, but that does not need to be your truth moving forward. And you get to choose to let that go and move forward in with a little bit more peace. And like, there's more to the forgiveness than just the like, oh, it's, you know, mindful and conscious and that's really lovely. No, you actually emotionally and energetically also carry that weight and it will give you emotional, physical effects because you're going to start the cascade of cortisol. So you go into that stress response. So then you're constantly hitting your body with this additional stress, even though that thing didn't happen to you just now. It happened to you 10 years ago, but you're going to continuously repeat it. Mm -hmm. So you're going to go through that trigger response. Got it. So the emotional impacts, you would say there's a lot, right? Would you mind giving us some examples? Absolutely. So when you're able to forgive, you're able to actually decrease your chances of being depressed or anxious. And again, it's like depression. You're holding on to the past and you're holding on to that sadness and anxiety is having that fear that it's going to happen to you again. Mm -hmm. And easier said than done. And again, our brains are wired to protect us. So something has happened to us in our past, our brains like this was horrible. Let's not do it again. I'm going to keep you safe. But then it almost like keeps you too safe. And it also blocks out any further joy and happiness. So for you to forgive, you make peace with it. And you're like, okay, not ideal. Let's move forward. And it also allows you to have more satisfaction in your relationships. And whether it's with that person that has upset you or other people as well. Because if you decide that, okay, well, this happened and now all people are bad, that's not true. So for you to like, just let it go and like make peace with it, you allow yourself to actually deepen your future relationships as well. And of course, forgiveness is always going to help you with things like empathy and compassion while letting go of things like resentment, bitterness, and that judgment. And then emotionally you create space to receive more of the good rather than like clench onto the bad. Got it. And what would you say the physical impacts are? So again, um, forgiveness and anger, those are actual like events that happen in your body. So if you're holding on to that anger, you're going to be living in that sympathetic nervous system or that like flight or fight response where your body is actually like ready to like mm-hmm. fight or attack. And that is going to cause you to have that like stress response. So So again, you're going to have more cortisol in your body. You're going to be releasing norepinephrine, which is also that like you're super heightened, you're tense. Physically, you're going to have like clenching the jaw. Your shoulders are up to like your ears. Your entire body is tensed and holding on. Like that's not comfortable. Like that physically feels uncomfortable in your body. But then if you actually look at the science behind it, for you to forgive actually lowers your white blood cell count. Mm -hmm. So you're not having that like, immune response of like something needs to be attacked. You're overstimulated. So you're actually, it benefits your immune system because your immune system doesn't need to be in this heightened response. So then in case it does need to attack something, it can do it. It's not already exhausted. Then it also like thing, like some of the other things that it lowers, like things like a heart attack, which is amazing because like, again, you're in that stress response your body is tense. Your blood pressure is going to be elevated. Mm -hmm. Your blood vessels are obviously constricted because you're ready to like fight. And that puts a lot of extra stress onto your heart. So it's like, if you already have a pre-existing condition or you're likely to develop any sort of cardiovascular issues, then holding on to this anger can actually increase your chances of having some sort of a cardiovascular accident, which is not ideal. And of course, things like sleep, 
if you are upset with somebody, what do you do? You go to bed and you think about it, think about it, think about it, think about it. You're not sleeping. Like that's not actual rest. You're, you're probably going to have more pain. It, like if you're clenching through your jaw and your shoulders, it's like your neck is like, can we just mm-hmm. like relax for can a second? Down a bit? Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. And it's like, again, like you're going to have a- actual physical pain in your body. And I mean, it really does not benefit you in any way, shape or form. And like, even just like that anger is linked to things like increased inflammation. So if you're having gut issues or you like can't get over this cold and you continuously getting sick and you are always exposed to things because your immune function is low and your body's too inflamed. So it can't actually handle any more stress. So overall, like there's massive benefits to like forgiveness and letting go of this anger for the sake of even your physical body, not even the emotional, spiritual, like namaste side, but like Mm -hmm. actually scientifically, like your body's like, can we, can we let this go please? So highly recommend. (laughs) And the anger you mentioned is a big deal too, right? Because anger doesn't sit well. I'm feeling uncomfortable no. even thinking about things. Like, I feel like, yeah, there's people that I need to forgive and just, <laughs> but I, yeah. yeah, it makes you angry. It doesn't make you feel and it's like, good. What comes up? It's like when you're, when you're thinking of somebody that you need to forgive, like what comes up for you? Like, it's like a, mm, I don't want to, but I don't want to, right. Yeah. It's like, you want to hold on to it, but then what is the purpose of that? Like, that's just taking up so much More space in space. your body, right? Uh huh. Mentally, emotionally, physically, and it's all weighing you down like an anchor. All right. So how do you start the process of forgiving and the whole forgiveness process? Um, where do you start? How do you really let go? And can you really let, 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 let go? Like everything? You absolutely can. (laughs) Okay. You can, you can do anything you desire Mm -hmm. if you choose to. Okay. And it's like, it does come down to like, kind of like a mindset and like reprogramming how you look at events but it's absolutely doable. Like there's nothing that's impossible. And especially if you can consider it, it can absolutely like absolutely happen. So the first thing is you need to acknowledge what happened. You, you actually need to see what happened, what went down, what were the details. And that is like triggering because you're kind of reliving it, but it's like, you're half reliving it by holding on to the anger. So can you just like rip off that bandaid and be like, okay, let's just see what happened here. Like mm, not ideal. And I mean, this is what most people avoid. They're just like, didn't happen. Didn't happen. Didn't happen. Keep moving on, have a glass of wine. I'm going to be busy. Let's go. But you're still reliving it. So you might as well actually just like acknowledge it. So that's like your step one. Your next one is going to be allowing yourself to actually be angry. And I know, especially women, they don't want to, because we've been raised to be like, be that good girl, be quiet. Don't actually speak up. Like, Oh, you don't want to offend anybody. Uh, No. And it's like, that is how we were raised initially. And like, that does not, does not serve us. And it's, it's okay for you to be angry. Like angry Mm -hmm. happens when someone crossed a boundary and you felt unsafe or unheard or like, you, you didn't feel good in that moment. Mm -hmm. Like anger doesn't just like happen. Most people feel that for a reason. So let yourself be angry. And like, you can actually allow that energy to move out of your body. If you allow yourself to actually process it as opposed to like kind of, and then push it down, kind of, and then push it down. And then like avoiding and resisting takes more time energy than just like, let's go do the thing, have a moment. And that allows you to just acknowledge that it happened and allows you to actually process what happened as opposed to kind of like avoiding it. And it just lingers. Got it. And then you do need to make peace with what happened and know that it does not determine your future. And it does not mean this is how everyone's going to treat you. This does not need to be your truth. This does not need to like determine your worth, your value or anything. It's like, this person did something not ideal. You felt crappy, feel crappy, move on and allow that to just be what it is. And like taking away that most emotional charge where it needs to mean something necessarily. And then it's like, you get to the part where you have to sit back and been like, why was I angry? What boundary was crossed? How did I feel unsafe? How did someone disrespect my wishes? why are you actually upset with the situation? Cause there's some people that like 
can be disrespected and then they're like mm-hmm. moving on but then other people are like really oh, really upset about it hurt mm-hmm. So it's like, is this something that's happened to you before? Has this person done this to you multiple times? Is this something you're being triggered from your childhood? Like there's a reason you had that big response. So get curious as to why that happened and then get clear on what your boundaries are. And it's like boundary work always comes down to you. You decide what your boundary is, but you also have to make sure that they are maintained. So that is the next big step. And then this one's sometimes a bit tricky. Acknowledge some people aren't meant to be in your life. It is what it is. And that if they're family, (laughs) especially when they're family, Uh, just (laughs) because someone's blood does not mean anything. You Mm -hmm. don't get privileges to be disrespectful. And it's, Mm -hmm. and that's the thing where like, again, it's hard because culturally we're, we're raised to like be nice, you know, accept everyone. Oh, but they're family. Oh, yeah. but they're the person who like, this is just what happened to them. Yeah. That does not give anyone a right to repeatedly upset you because you deserve to be like respected and your needs to be met and for you to feel good when interacting with somebody. So then again, boundaries, you go back to your boundaries of like, okay, well, this is not okay. And this is how it's going to be. And that is like, that takes a little bit of, I guess, <laughs> practice to be able to stand up and speak Mm -hmm. your truth, which is totally okay. And then you do need to be a bit patient because like, it doesn't just, if there's been something you've been holding onto for like 10, 15 years, like it's not going to be like, okay, it's gone. Like you might need to kind of soothe it out and just make sure that you feel Mm -hmm. exactly. And then the last part that I'm going to mention, and I think this is the one that is for sure the hardest and the one that's always forgotten. You have to forgive yourself. Okay. Because usually people are more upset at themselves for allowing that thing to happen rather than they are at the other person who did the thing. And this comes up with my clients all the oh. time. It's easier for them to forgive the other person or forgive that situation. But then they're like, yeah, but I let it happen. Yeah, but I I, I let it happen again. Mm. Yeah, but like this always happens to me. Yeah, but and I was like, no, no, no. So then make peace with yourself as well and stop like that. Like that's part of the blame game. It's like, you're blaming other people. You're blaming the situation, but then you're like, yeah, but did I deserve that? Should I have done that? Maybe if, and then again, you're going down into that rumination, like obsessing over the details, which is not going to get you anywhere because the thing is already done. Got it. So maybe more of the tools you can go over some of like how we can physically, mentally, emotionally do this. Do the thing. So I love writing angry letters, (laughs) (laughs) just saying. Mm -hmm. And it's like, most people are like, no, I don't journal. And like, oh, I don't, I'm not a good writer. Okay. I swear. If you just put dear blank, I cannot believe you did blank. Things will come out that you weren't expecting (laughs) and it's just going to go. And I do recommend doing the actual, like pen to paper, just because when you're thinking it, you might just go into like a different tangent, but if you're writing it, like you're actually moving energy out of your body and you're Mm -hmm. actually like releasing and don't like proofread it. It doesn't need to look pretty. Like if it's not legible, it doesn't matter. Do the thing, get it on paper, get it out. I mean, don't necessarily give it to them because that might cause some ruckus if you want to amazing. Or then at the end, just like rip it up to shreds. That's another way for you to like release that and like actually have an action to it where you're like letting it go. Let it go. Every time I say it, I keep on singing that song. <laughs> I, do, I can't I help it. it, but it's a great song. Okay. And it's a great song for the holidays to really let it go and sing a little Elsa frozen. I never even seen the yeah. movie, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Me either. I've only seen chunks, but that was enough for me. <laughs> me <too. laughs> um, the next thing I would recommend is to actually like hit something safely, like hit a pillow or like, you know, those like pool noodles hit yes. it on your couch or your bed. Um, there's actually a thing uh, called a rage room and I'm sure I've heard you of guys them. Have. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yes. I'm like kind of dying to go. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> You could bring your own stuff to break. You could bring guitars, TVs. You could bring all this, or they have stuff. You pay extra for yeah. each individual item to break. <laughs> I think it's I know hilarious. there's one in Los Angeles. I've heard of it. Yeah. Yeah. So like, that's like something on my to-do list of like, I want to do it. I think the only thing that's been holding me back is like, you have to wear this ridiculous helmet, which I mean, safety first, that's fine. Yeah. But then with like COVID, I'm like, 
people get like yeah. super sweaty and gross and I don't want that rubbing on my face. I'm like, is that clean? So I need to buy my own helmet. That's what I'm going to do. Santa, I need a helmet to go to a rage room. <laughs> That's great. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So I do recommend actually doing something physical. So that can even be doing like a boxing, like go kickboxing or go for like a super aggressive run or like do some sort of a hit cardio workout, but like do something that like moves your body. Cause again, energetically something will leave and like, you'll, you'll start off kind of quiet, but then like you start kind of like maybe moving some energy and like maybe yelling. Like I love medicine balls and I just like throw them and it feels so good at the gym. It's like, people are like, is she okay? And I was like, Perfect. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I want to see one of those videos on Instagram. Like, your reels. <laughs> Coming soon. I'm accepting requests. <laughs> Seriously. Yes. Why not? I love it. So then the other thing I really recommend, and this was something that was said to me and it, it really changed my perspective. Know that there's some people are actually doing their best and that's their max capacity of how they can show up emotionally or physically or in any other way and know that maybe your expectations are too high of them and they're actually never going to change because they just don't have that ability to do that work to get to that level. So then one, you need to lower your expectations, set boundaries and not let them hurt you over and over again, but then also just be okay with like, maybe this is, this is all you got, but it's not enough. And I choose not to have you in my life. And like, when I was told that, and it actually made sense and I actually processed that I'm like, yeah, I think you are doing your best, but I'm like, it's not good enough. And I deserve better. So it's like, kind of like a double, like, got it, got it moving on. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's a big one. Okay. Um, deciding to forgive is where the magic happens. And that's like the same with like, let's say someone wants to quit smoking if they don't actually choose and decide and know that it's possible and they like commit to it, it's not going to happen. It doesn't matter how many people scare them with health statistics and show them pictures and like people are crying. Nobody cares. If they don't decide the change is not going to happen. So that is a big one. Um, and then there's a certain type of meditation. It's called meta and it's love and kindness. And you essentially practice compassion and like kindness. And it's like a forgiveness sort of gentle, um, exercise where regardless if someone has upset, you'd hurt you, you send them this intention of may you be happy, may you be healthy, may you be free. And it's like, whatever happened, happened. I'm still sending you this like blessing of like, but I hope you're okay. So that's a really, really powerful uh, tool as well. Great. And what about some other techniques you could do personally to help us that maybe we can't do ourselves? Absolutely. So Reiki, really powerful. Um, Of course, that's going to allow you to tap into that energy and it allows you to release it. So someone can help you physically move that like heaviness or that like heat or that Mm -hmm. anger that's within you. Um, NLP, so neuro-linguistic programming, it allows you to go back into the past. It actually look at that situation differently. You're not erasing a memory. You're just taking a step back, kind of looking at it from a different angle, taking away that charge, the emotion and all those triggers, and just like seeing it as is and making peace with it while kind of moving forward with some sort of piece of wisdom that you're like, you can learn from this. It's like, God, if this happened, but it doesn't need to happen again or whatever else comes up. I love EFT tapping, super easy to do. You're just activating the energy systems in your body and you're allowing this energy to flow through you, similar to acupuncture. So you're activating your life force, the energy, the chi, but you're also allowing emotions to physically be released. So you're bringing them up to the surface. You're kind of like opening that like gate so it can like move out. And then you're allowing more positive energy to take its place and kind of like settle and soothe. And it's great if you just got triggered, you can do it for like things that are in the past as well, but it's like, you just had a really crappy day, tap on it right away, as opposed to that energy kind of like sticking to you and cementing. And then you have to do the work later. It's like, no, 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 no. Just shake it off, move it right away. Mm Mm-hmm. Working with a coach or some sort of a mentor or a psychotherapist is really helpful because then someone's able to look at it from a different perspective. Perspective. And and it's like also guides you of like, sometimes you need to be called out and being like, hey, 
you're doing the thing again, or like, Hey, does this actually matter? So having someone that can Mm -hmm. be there for you, keep you accountable on your healing journey, hold the space and like, listen to it. Cause like, sometimes my clients will just send me massive emails and I was just like, vent, let it out. I'm here. I'm listening. And then just even having that energy to go somewhere and, you know, someone listen, they're like, Oh, okay. I feel better. There you go. So those are my big tips for you. What are your thoughts? Great. Well, I know also life coaching could help in general, yeah. right? Having some of the bounce off here and there, which with you obviously works virtually, we could do that. And when someone does meet uh, with a life coach, could you explain the process and how many times a week we're meeting? And could you tell yeah. us the type of coaching you're offering right now? Absolutely. So with a life coach, everyone does a little bit differently. The way that I do it um, for my one-on-one coaching, I have a four-week program and I have a three-month program and I cater it completely to the person. So there isn't necessarily like a, you know, week one, we do this week two, we do that. It's a, we meet, we talk about what your biggest issues are and where do you want to go? And what do you think your limiting um, blocks are? What's holding you back? And then we go through block by block, releasing them, reframing them, giving your power back, getting clear on what you actually want and really reminding the person that they're worthy to have all that they desire. They can have it all. You can feel the joy. It doesn't matter where you are at right now, or if you've done any inner work or not, it is absolutely possible for you to get to that next step where you actually wake up happy and you go to bed smiling and you're like, yay, I can't wait to do this again. As opposed to like, ugh, this sucks. So that is my one-on-one program. And then I am launching something new. It's going to be a group coaching program and it starts in January awesome. and perfect for with the new this, year. there you go. January 11th, it starts. And this is meeting weekly for six weeks, 75 minutes, zoom calls, doesn't matter where you're, you're at. Um, in case you can't make the calls they're in the evening, they're recorded awesome. and every single week we go through something specific. So I use all of my favorite tools. So the Reiki hypnosis, the tapping, I open up the Akashic records for that healing energy, NLP, all the things every week you get an hour's worth of that. And you also have this beautiful opportunity to connect with other people, share your story. You can have a little bit of one-on-one coaching time with me. If you're ready to share and you want me to like support you. And in addition, I've included some tutorials and It doesn't matter if you're brand new to self-development or you've done a little bit. I go through what is like meditation, mindfulness. How do you tap? How do you protect your energy? How do you create boundaries? How do you set up your morning rituals, setting goals? All those like super important basics that like everyone should know (laughs) slash really changed my life. I want to teach you how to do those things so you can do it on your own. I'm just like the guide, the person who kind of like creates the space, sends the zoom link, but I want you to be able to actually take back your power and like heal yourself and choose the type of life that you desire. Beautiful and perfect gift for the holidays, right? Because everyone can use a little pick me up and I'm sure we can Mm -hmm. buy gifts certificate for your services. Is that true? And where can we find out more information about you and all these services and exciting January 11th? group coaching. Yes. Yes. Love it. Love it. Love it. You can check out my website, the urban healer.ca CA. Cause I'm in Canada. You can check me out on Instagram. It's at the dot urban dot healer and send me a DM, send me an email. Email is hello at the urban healer.ca. It's my Perfect. urban urban healer. Find me. I'm here for it. Have a very merry, merry, merry Christmas. Thank you. you too. Enjoy your time with your family, your friends and everything. And looking forward to we speak again. Okay. Thank you. Sounds good. And forgive everyone. Forgive at that dinner table. I know it's not easy. Reach out. And set boundaries. (laughs) Talk to you later. Have a great day to all of our listeners. Stay tuned. More of the show is on the way. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's, it's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage-free, fully adaptive, handicap-accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home. 
that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay.